Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. In the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of September. India announces $1 billion line of credit for Russia's Far East. Former U.S. Defense Secretary Mattis says Pakistan most dangerous country. And at least 10 killed in Taliban attack in Kabul. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the plenary session of the 5th Eastern Economic Forum in Russia on Thursday. Modi said that India will walk shoulder to shoulder with Russia in its development of the Far East and announced a $1 million line of credit for the development of the resource-rich region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Thursday that India would offer Russia one billion US dollars credit line to help develop Russia's Far East region. Addressing the plenary session of the Fifth Eastern Economic Forum in the city of Vladivostok, Prime Minister Modi said that India will walk shoulder to shoulder with Russia in its development of the Far East. The Prime Minister, in presence of Russian President Vladimir Putin, also unveiled the Act Far East policy to boost India's engagement with Russia's Far East region. फार इस के विकास में और योगदान देने के लिए भारत 1 बिलियन डॉलर्स की लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट देगा यह पहला मौका है कि हम किसी देश के क्षेत्र विशेष को लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट दे रहे हैं मेरी सरकार की एक्ट इस पॉलिसी ने इस एशिया को एक्टिवली Engage kiya hai. Prime Minister Modi earlier met his Malaysian and Japanese counterparts and held bilateral talks with them on the sidelines of the forum. Modi arrived in Russia on a two-day visit on Wednesday to participate in the 28th India-Russia annual summit with President Putin and for the Eastern Economic Forum. India under the new anti-terror law designated lashkar e taiba founder Hafiz Saeed and three others as terrorists. Backing India, the U.S. has said the move has expanded possibilities of cooperation between the two countries in fighting terrorism. The U.S. has backed India on its move to declare lashkar e taiba founder Hafiz Saeed and three others individual terrorists under the new anti-terror law, saying the move has expanded possibilities of cooperation between the two countries in fighting terrorism. The Acting Assistant Secretary for South and Central Asia on Thursday tweeted, We stand with India and commend it for utilizing new legal authorities to designate four notorious terrorists. On Wednesday, lashkar e taiba Chief Hafiz Saeed, jaish muhammad Chief Masood Azhar, LAT's Supreme Commander of Operations in Kashmir, Zakir Unimal Lakhvi and Fugitive Underworld Dawn, Daud Ibrahim were designated as terrorists under the amended Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, UAPA, through a government notification. India says that Azhar was behind several terrorist incidents in India, including the 2001 attack on the parliament. Saeed was also the mastermind of the 2008 Mumbai attacks that killed more than 160 people. These decisions have been taken nearly a month after the Indian Parliament approved a crucial amendment to the Unlawful Activities Prevention Amendment Act 1967. The amendment to the Act allows the Indian government to designate individuals as terrorists. Former U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has said he considers Pakistan as the most dangerous country he dealt with in his career. In his autobiography released this week, he cited the reasons to be the level of radicalization of Pakistan society and its nuclear weapons. Former U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has called Pakistan the most dangerous country he had to deal with. 
68 year old military veteran Mattis made these comments in his latest book titled Call Sign Chaos Learning to Lead He has written in his autobiography which was released on Tuesday that of all the countries I have dealt with I consider Pakistan to be the most dangerous because of the radicalization of its society and the availability of nuclear weapons He said we can't have the fastest growing nuclear arsenal in the world falling into the hands of the terrorists breeding in their midst the result would be disastrous Mattis also framed US Pakistan relations as a continuing narrative afflicted by differences and distrust he writes we could manage our problems with Pakistan but our divisions were too deep and trust too shallow to resolve them and that is the state of our relationship to this day Inis from Afghanistan at least 10 people were killed and more than 40 wounded in a suicide blast on Wednesday near the headquarters of Afghanistan's NATO force and the US embassy in Kabul the Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack A suicide blast in the center of Kabul killed at least 10 people and wounded more than 40 on Thursday destroying cars and shops in an area near the headquarters of Afghanistan's NATO force and the US embassy officials said Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack even as the insurgents and US officials have been negotiating a deal on a US troop withdrawal in exchange for Taliban security guarantees Witnesses said the suicide bomber blew himself up as hundreds of people were standing or crossing the road. Thursday's attack came 3 days after at least 16 people were killed and several wounded in a truck bomb attack in Kabul. It was also claimed by the Taliban. More news from Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's spokesperson has said that the government is concerned about the US Taliban peace deal and further clarity on the document is needed to completely analyze its negative consequences. The Afghan government has concerns about the draft peace agreement reached between US and the Taliban negotiators and wants further clarification President Ashraf Ghani's main spokesperson Sadiq Siddiqui said on Wednesday In a series of tweets Siddiqui said the Afghan government is concerned and would like further clarity on the document to completely analyze its dangers and negative consequences and avoid the dangers The deal intended to open the way for intra-Afghan talks was presented to President Ashraf Ghani this week by Zalmay Khalilzad, the special US envoy for peace in Afghanistan. It would see around 5000 US troops withdrawn and five bases closed in exchange for guarantees that Afghanistan would not be used as a base for militant attacks on America. However, there have been no let up in violence so far with the Taliban stepping up attacks in the capital Kabul and provincial centers across the country. In recent days, large groups of insurgent fighters have attacked the northern cities of Kunduz and Pule Khumri. In is from Bangladesh, Rohingya refugees sheltered in Bangladesh have expressed their concern over the decision to block mobile data services for them due to security concerns in the country. The decision was announced this week amid a spike in violent crimes near the Fuji camps. Rohingya refugees living in Bangladeshi camps have expressed their unhappiness over the decision to block mobile data services due to security concerns in the country. The decision came following a spike in violent crimes in Bangladesh's Cox's Bazar district where more than 1 million Rohingyas are sheltered. Bangladesh Telecom Regulatory Authority on Tuesday ordered mobile phone operators to partially block high-speed data services to areas where Rohingya refugees are living in sprawling camps. 12 lakh Rohingya se jeh re to ede hodun pura mura shondar ase ase to itar Allah bolle hoy ara jodi mobile jodi bondho kore bolto to ki le ara to solde hoyte ara to beshi hosto hobo beshi dukh paiyo beshi samasya ase तो 
ইয়াৰ পৰা ভিডিও আছে ওজে বাই আনি আছে ভিডিও সমাজ সদৰ আছে দুবাই আছে তা আজি যদি ভিডিও সমাজ যোগাযোগ যোগাযোগ কৰি না ফাইলে এবে তাৰ খবৰ পাত্ৰ ইতাৰ খবৰ পাত্ৰ ফাইম কেন কৰি আৰে তই আৰ এ ওকে হন ওকে হাম হামত দি হামত যাই বাদিও হামত গিলে যদি মোবাইল যদি যোগাযোগ কৰি না ফাইলে তাৰ খবৰ পাত্ৰ ফাইম কেন কৰি ইয়া আলা আৰ তো মোবাইল যদি সিম যদি বন্ধ কৰিলে আৰ তে দুয়া সমস্যা Over 730,000 Rohingyas fled Myanmar for Bangladesh after a military crackdown in August 2017 that the United Nations has said was perpetrated with genocidal intent. Myanmar has denied almost all the allegations. It is from Nepal. Animal rights activists stage a protest in Kathmandu on Wednesday against the recent incidents of brutality against cows and stray dogs. They held placards and chanted slogans against animal cruelty. Animal rights activists gathered in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday to protest against the recent killings of cows and dogs in Surkhet and Khotang districts of the country. About 25 cows were found dead and over 100 were thrown off the slopes in Nepal's Surkhet district last week. In an another incident a video of municipality officials in Khotang district torturing and killing a stray dog went viral on social media. The protesters were seen holding placards and banners decrying inhuman behavior against the animals. हाम्रो एक मा त छ तर त्यो हुन्छ नि अब यो प्रपर वे मा चाहिँ इम्प्लिमेन्टेसन इम्प्लिमेन्टेसन भएको छैन है अब म चाहिँ नि गभर्नमेन्टले के भन्न चाहन्छु भने एउटा स्ट्रिक्ट रुल्स एन्ड रेगुलेसन ल्याएर चाहिँ अगाडि बढ्नु पर्यो सो दैट हुन्छ नि एनिमल एब्युज र क्रुएल्टीको कुरा चाहिँ नि विस्तारै कम हुँदै जाओस् हाम्रो नेपालमा तर नेपालमा अहिलेसम्म त्यस्तो स्थिति छैन जुन सरकारी निकामा बसेको छ जो वादामा बसेको छ जस्तै कानून बनाउँछ उनीहरूले नि मिचिरहेको अवस्था छ Activists at the protest also outlined the grave condition of animal rights in Nepal claiming that the government itself is violating the provisions. According to local authorities of Khotang district the canines were being caught and killed as part of the campaign to rid the town of stray dogs local media reported. Exiled Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama on Wednesday began a teaching session in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. Hundreds of people from across the globe are participating in the three-day session. Hundreds of people, including monks, nuns, and followers from across the globe, gathered in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Wednesday to take part in the teaching session of Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama spoke about the four noble truths. There are 16 characteristics and 37 factors of enlightenment during the teaching session. The event was organized on the request of a group of Asian followers. His holiness is the embodiment of compassion and and wisdom and so it's really wonderful to be here for everybody I think. I mean this is an international sangha and Dalai Lama is uh, the most important person on this planet right now to me and I think to all the devotees of. Exiled Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama has lived in India since fleeing a failed uprising against Chinese rule of his homeland in 1959. A government of exiled Tibetans and tens and thousands of refugees are also based in Dharamsala in India's northern Himachal Pradesh province. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India announces 1 billion dollar line of credit for Russia's Far East. Former US Defense Secretary Mattis says Pakistan most dangerous country. And at least 10 killed in Taliban attack in Kabul. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.